Okay, Garrett, everything looks good, so here we go. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I'm ready. The Cobert Report, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is the Colbert Report. How do you hear me? Colbert Report, this is Station Loud and Clear. Awesome. Uh, uh, Mr. Reisman, thank you so much for joining us from, from the depths of space. Um, you are an astronaut, you're a scientist, you're an engineer, but more importantly, you are a member of the Colbert Nation, correct? This is, uh, actually, I would like to say Colbert Universe, I guess would be more appropriate. Awesome. We've gone galactic. I can't believe my voice is being broadcast to space right now. I should say something really profound. Eat it, John Stewart. I'm talking to space. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> now, sir, uh, what is your job up on the space station? On the space station, I'm uh, flight engineer number two, uh, which basically basically means I uh, do whatever they need me to do. Uh, we spend a lot of time keeping the place uh, running, keeping it ship shape, and uh, doing some scientific experiments and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Are you saying that you're a janitor with a PhD? <laughs> Uh, it's a bit of a glorified janitor, yeah. I, that's probably a pretty good description. I do a lot of cleaning. <laughs> you you run the robot arm, correct? That's correct. That's another one of my duties. In fact, uh, right after we finish uh, this interview today, I'm taking the robot out for a little spin. When you control the robot arm, will you be using the hand that is wearing the wrist strong bracelet by any chance? Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, the uh, wrist uh, is very important to us up here in space. We do use it to control the robot arm. The wrist comes in handy for landing the space shuttle and also for firing our laser cannons. <laughs> so it's, it's purely practical at this point. Oh, absolutely. I, I do have to admit that we don't really have laser cannons, but sometimes I like to pretend. It's just for fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the laser cannons in my mind, if you don't mind, sir. Now, uh, can we prove to people that, that you're in space right now? Would you please take off your wrist strong bracelet and, and spin it in that astronaut way? Now, sir, I, oh, I can die and go to heaven now. Now, uh, sir, um, have you done a spacewalk? Yes, I have. Uh, it was actually right when I first got here, I did a spacewalk, and it was to install uh, the new Japanese laboratory module and also the new robot we got from Canada. And uh, that was uh, by far and away the most exciting and also the most challenging moment of my whole mission so far. Now, you make a very good point. There are uh, people of other nationalities on this international space station. Um, there are Russians with you, correct? That's correct. Uh, I have two Russian crewmates. They're both uh, way back on the other side of the space station uh, working, uh, working away as we speak. Is there any way to keep the space race against the Russians going? Like, any way to keep the competition? Like, uh, like could you guys engage in a thumb war or, or, or pinochle? Anything to just to crush those commies? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. The thumb war, my, my, our commander, Sergei, he's, he's got a pretty good grip, so I don't know if we'll do so well in that. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, as far as a basketball competition, I'm only about five foot five. Or, uh, actually, five foot five now. I was even shorter before I launched. You grow a little bit in space. Um, but anyway, uh, I can think of something that we can uh, beat them at. But, you know, this is really all about partnership. It's an international space station. We have 16 different countries participating with us, and uh, we're all, uh, you know, in this together. Well, uh, sir, you, you, you came up with a good point. You grow in space, um, but I've heard that you, uh, in space, no one can hear you scream. Would, would, would you test that for me right now? Could, could you scream for us? Hey, sure, uh, Stephen, I'd be happy to. Hey, sure, Stephen, I'd be happy to. <laughs> it's true. It's true. No one can hear you scream. I didn't believe that. Well, I, I owe Ridley Scott an apology. Um, uh, do you get to go on another spacewalk? Uh, the plan right now is, uh, is, right now there's nothing on the books, but um, if something uh, should come up and they need me to, uh, I have all the equipment and I'm ready to go. Uh, so it's, uh, it's possible but unlikely. Well, as you know, you're, you're supposed to give your wrist strong bracelet to someone more famous than you. So if you get to go on the spacewalk, w would you just take it off and, and shoot it at God for me? Because I'd love to see him with that thing on his wrist. That would be the, uh, the ultimate product placement. I'll, 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 uh, I'll see what I can do. No promises. <laughs> hold, hold on one second, one second, sir. I want to make sure I'm getting the most out of the my precious time we have with you. I'm just going to look at my questions. Um, we got the Russians. Uh, what? Mars, going to Mars. Okay, great. Um, uh, by the way, uh, up there in the space station, uh, do you eat Dippin' Dots? Because I understand they're the ice cream of the future. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, no, actually, we, uh, unfortunately, we don't even have a refrigerator up here, so uh, there's no ice cream at all. Uh, not even that uh, kind of styrofoam type that you buy in the gift stores at the Kennedy Space Center. We don't even have that. Uh, but it's pretty cold outside, isn't it? Couldn't you, like, just place a six-pack out there and it would be just perfect drinking in about 20 seconds? But also, it's, it's very warm. It all depends if we're in the sun or if we're in the shade. Uh, so it can range by hundreds of, de of degrees. So uh, uh, it probably won't be too good for the for the beer, unfortunately. Well, speaking of which, you know, the Russians who are up there with you, uh, because it's weightless, how do they keep their borscht in their bowls? <laughs> or, or how do they take those shots of vodka they're always taking? Well, you know, it, it's not easy to become a cosmonaut in Russia, and let's just say there's lots of tests you have to go through uh, before you get selected. These guys are pretty good. I assume it must be hard to keep the vodka in the shot glasses, or is it mostly jello shots up there? It's funny, uh, you know, the, uh, our last uh, commander was Peggy Whitson, and she had a, a, a real fondness for margarita, uh, and so, but uh, we don't have any of that up here. So uh, we just have what they did send her was margarita-flavored jello. So you're not too far off. We do have that. All right. I think like a scientist. <laughs> now, you study the effects of weightlessness on the body, including the behavior of fluids, correct? That's, that's absolutely correct, Stephen. Now, that, that seems like a euphemism for going to the bathroom. How do you do that up there? Or do, or do you not do it at all? Do they say to you, well, no, you should have gone before you left Earth? <laughs> Yes, uh, you know, uh, I know this is cable and all, but, I, but even so, I can't uh, demonstrate that for you. But basically, we have uh, a toilet uh, that uh, uses airflow in, instead of gravity. And it more or less works the same way as it does on Earth, just uh, the, the airflow helps it along. The airflow helps it along. That sounds refreshing. Pretty much. You try it sometimes, Stephen. Exactly. All right. <laughs>